we're going to go over the proving lines parallel notes. Um, so we've already learned all the vocabulary, the alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding consecutive interior, consecutive exterior, and all of those things. Um, but you can only use those things if you know the lines are already parallel. Um, if you don't know the lines are already parallel, then you have to use what is called the converse of those things. So the first thing is corresponding angles. So this will be the converse of corresponding angles. And those corresponding angles are, of course, congruent. So if you can prove that corresponding angles are congruent, then you know the lines are parallel. But you have to prove that they're congruent first. That's the same for alternate interior, so converse of alternate interior angles. And of course, alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you can prove that they're congruent, then the lines are parallel. Same thing with converse of alternate exterior. They are congruent. But then we have consecutive interior. Now it is still converse of consecutive interior. But those are no longer congruent. Remember, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So remember, it says that they're supplementary, not that they equal 180. So you have to say they're supplementary first, then you can say that they equal 180. Same thing with consecutive exterior. And they are supplementary. All right, then we have a last one, and this one's new. It's the converse of, per of a perpendicular transversal. So two lines are perpendicular. If you can prove they're perpendicular on the same line, then those lines are, if they are both perpendicular to the same line, then that proves that those two lines that are both perpendicular to the same line are then parallel. All right, so um, it says if the measure of angle one and angle two, which line, if they're equal, then which lines are parallel and why? So remember that you figure out the transversal by the line that touches both angles. So angle one uses this line and this line to form angle one. Angle two uses this line and this line to form angle two. So that means this one right here is my transversal um so the one that is transverse the one that they both cover is your transversal but the other two the one that each of them touches are your parallel lines so that is o and p i know it's hard to see them plus they're cursive but they are o and p so lines line o is parallel to line p and then we know that because it is converse, we're proving that they are parallel. And then you have to state these angle pairs. So it is one is on the inside, one is on the outside, and they skip over an angle. So they are corresponding, converse of corresponding angles. This is your answer. Okay, we have to prove that they are, that M and N are parallel. Um, and then we have to state why, and the why is, of course, what the angle pair is. We're trying to prove that they are parallel, so we start with converse always. Anytime you're trying to prove it's parallel, it's converse. And then these angles are on the inside, so they're interior, and they're across the transversal. So alternate interior angles. So converse of alternate interior angles. Now, alternate interior angles are congruent, so we set these equal. 6x minus 20 is equal to 3x plus 10. Then solve from there. I move my 3x over, move my 20 over, and then my x would have to be 10. And as long as my x is 10, then that proves that those lines are parallel. Um, and then I also have to find the measure of ABC, which A... B, C is this one, so this is this angle. S six times, 
times 10 minus 26 times 10 is 60 minus 20 would be 40 degrees for ABC. All right, this is your proof foldable and all of the different um, theorems. Of course, we have the regular theorems here. And then we have the converses that go along with them. So the way that you know which one is which is if you already know they're parallel, then it's the regular words. If you are proving they're parallel, then it is the converse of those words. But these are all words you already know, so um, it shouldn't be too hard to memorize those. All right, these are our proofs. Of course, the very first thing we can write is our given. So L is parallel to M and R is parallel to S and it is given. So anything that's given to you, you want to mark it. So these are parallel to each other and these are parallel to each other. So this makes the proof easier because as long as we know that they are parallel, then all of those, our pattern stuff works. All of those um, vocabulary words, you can use them immediately. And what we're trying to prove is 5 and 15 are the same. 5 is here and 15 is over here. Well, you can do this immediately because these are on the outside and they're across from each other. So my next thing, because I know they're parallel, I can say that 5 is congruent to 15. And the reason is those are alternate exterior angles. And it's not converse because we already knew they were parallel. We're not proving they're parallel. So it's just alternate exterior. For our next one, we know that A is parallel to B. And we also know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle 14 is equal to 180. So that's given. Okay, so we know that A is parallel to B. So what that means is this is two separate type of pictures, the way you have to look at it. Um, that means that this, those would be alternate exterior angles. One and 11 would be. They would be congruent because they are alternate exterior angles. Um, so you would have to look at it that way. The other one is this way. You cannot look at it vertically yet because we don't know that the other set are parallel. That's what we're trying to prove. So the first thing that we can do is we can ignore this and say that 1 and 11 are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 11 and that is because of alternate exterior angles. They are alternate exterior angles. Now, of course, if they're congruent, they're also equal. So the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle 11. And that is the definition of congruence. Now, let's try substituting this guy. So we know that one is the same as 11. So let's make that 11. So four is the measure of angle 11 plus the measure of angle 14 is equal to 180 degrees. Now let's Oh, that's substitution of steps one and three. Okay, so let's look at our picture now. I know that one and 14 are supplementary. Well, now if I look at my picture like this, those are consecutive interior angles and they are um, supplementary. So let's say that they're supplementary first. So angle 11 and angle 14 are supplementary. That's the definition of supplementary. Now that we know that they're supplementary, then we can say that um, mm, that they C and D are parallel. Okay. Now, anytime that says parallel, your first word will be converse over here every single time because we are proving it's parallel. Now we know they're parallel because these are supplementary and what type of angle pairs are those? Those are consecutive interior angles. So converse of consecutive interior angles. We proved that they're parallel because we proved that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary first by doing substitution. 
All right, next one. My givens are angle three and angle five are supplementary. One is given. So let's look at where three and five are. Three and five. They don't, they're not any type of angle pair right now. Um, so what we need to do is come up with a way that three and five are related to each other just from the picture. So remember the angle pairs you're allowed to pull from a picture are vertical angles, um, a linear pair, and segment and angle addition, but that's not relevant to this one. So you can use either one of these and it doesn't matter which one it is um, because of what will happen in the end. So um, first of all, let's go ahead and say that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five is equal to 180. That's the definition of supplementary. Okay, so you have a choice. You can say that two and five are the same because they're vertical angles. You pulled it from the picture. And then you would substitute two for five in this equation. Well, in the equation, not that one, in this equation. Two for five, and then they're consecutive interior angles. Another thing that you can do is you can say five and six are a linear pair. This would take more steps, but it still works. You could say five and six are a linear pair, five, and then you would say five and six are supplementary, and then you would say five plus six equals 180, and then you would need to solve for the measure of angle three on this one and the measure of angle six on that one, and then say that they're equal to each other, which then would be alternate interior angles. That's a lot. It's a lot more steps. It is harder, but it's still valid if you want to do it that way. You also can say that three and eight are vertical and then say that eight and five are supplementary because they are consecutive exterior angles. So this proof actually has a lot of choices, um, which is why it's so hard for us to grade them on tests because they do have so many options for you to prove them. My choice is going to be that two and five are, are vertical. And that is because of the picture. And then because they're vertical, we can say that they're equal. That's because of the vertical angle theorem. Now that we know that they're equal, I am going to replace this five with this two. So that is supplementary, oops, supplementary of steps two and four. And then I can say that two and three are supplementary And that's the definition of supplementary angles. All right, if two and three are supplementary, then I can say that those lines are parallel and it's because they are one of our vocabulary words. They are consecutive interior angles. So I can say that M is parallel to N and then because we're proving parallel, this will start with converse. And what type of angle pairs are these? These are consecutive interior angles. Is that everything? Yep, that's it.